benefits of intermittent fasting for your brain health. Surprisingly, haven't covered that yet. So here goes. 2013 study done in mice. Now bear in mind that mice research does not directly correlate to the same result in human beings, always, but some of the time there's a lot to be learned. That's why we do it. So hold it loosely. But here's what the research indicated. There were three different groups. One was an intermittently fasted group of mice. A second was a group, group that consumed a high fat diet. And a third group um, just ate their normal normal mice diet. And then they compared basically um, various markers for brain health in these three different groups. So here's what emerged from this study. In the intermittently fasted group, it appears that they had better brain health. Number one, it appears that intermittent fasting reduces and decreases the damage done by oxidative stress as measured by several markers that are generally accepted to be markers of oxidative stress. So first of all, you need to understand what oxidative stress is. Put simply, it's merely the stress that all of our cells and any living cell undergoes because of the chemical reactions that it, that it carries out in the cell to manufacture proteins or to um, create energy, etc. You have all these reactions going on. Sometimes there are waste products generated that can be highly reactive and because of their high reactivity, they have a tendency to potentially cause damage to other areas of the cell. I'll give you an example. Here's an analogy, actually. A human being who breaks up from some significant relationship and the breakup itself destabilizes them and they go out and they want to hook up with anybody and everybody. That's a free radical, basically, in the chemistry scenario. So because they're non-selective and will just, they don't, their standard is very low, they will just bond with anything. That can cause problems down the road. Namely, if the, in the, the chemical reaction that they hooked up with um, causes, ends up with damage. So for example, oxidative stress, the classic example is oxygen uh, binding to metal causes rust. That's oxidation. That can decrease the integrity of the metal and then it falls apart. That's an example of oxidative stress. So the same, a similar thing can happen in the body and does happen in the body. And our bodies are equipped to handle such a thing. In fact, expecting such a thing. So we have antioxidants that are lying around the cell ready to jump on and hook up with the free radical to keep it from just wandering anywhere. And so those things like glutathione or superoxide dismutase, these are intracellular um, antioxidants. So back to the study that I was telling you about. As I mentioned, one of the mental health benefits, particularly in the brain, um, from intermittent fasting, it, it would be the following. They measured H&E, which stands for 4 hydroxy non 2 non -etyl, enol which is a protein um, that has been associated with cytotoxicity, meaning cell high levels of toxic occurrences, meaning lots of free radical generation inside a cell. Also, nitrotyrosine containing proteins are another marker for um, oxidative stress inside a cell. In this study with the intermittently fasted group of mice, those two, they measured those two um, levels, proteins, and they decreased in the intermittently fasted group. Another, a third thing that was measured was um, glutathione to its other form, which would be glutathione disulfide when it's mopping up damage. 
if too many free radicals are parked on the glutathione, when it's in its glutathione disulfide state, one, one state it can take, because um, it can mop up other things as well, then it's not ready to, to mop up other stuff. And so then it's this ratio between glutathione and its um, GSSG, as it's referred to, state, um, suggests that there's high level of oxidative stress on this particular cell. Like it's trying to mop it up. If the ratio is, well, I, should, I take that back. Meaning if the glutathione is low, the real glutathione, not the bound to the free radical version. So in this case, they measured that the ratio between the glutathione and the GSSG actually um, increased. So you had more glutathione that was ready to carry other passengers in its taxi cab, which is, that's a marker that improvement in terms of the oxidative stress. So I make the argument that it appears to reduce the damage done by oxidative stress. That's what intermittent fasting did in these mice. That's thing one. The next benefit was that it was linked to positive in brain structure in, in the hippocampus. So two of the th structural differences with the intermittently fasted group versus the um, group who um, consumed fat, high fat and the other group that was just the controlled group was that they had a thicker CA1 pyramidal uh, layer. This is a layer in the hippocampus that has been associated in the research. So it's generally accepted that this is a marker for synaptic plasticity. So all the stuff that you see about intermittent fasting increasing synaptic plasticity, um, this is one place where you could kind of make that jump. Um, it's a little bit of a jump, but I don't think it's such a huge jump that we shouldn't be utilizing that information. A second thing, uh, and because we have other, th other things to correlate it with as well, um, the fact that um, we do see a reduction in synaptic plasticity and we see it a, a, in Alzheimer's disease patients and we see um, problems in the hippocampus. And so this is you know, kind of the opposite of that. It, it suggests that a, a mental health benefit. A second thing, the fasted group had increased expression of drebin, which is this protein that has been observed it decreases in Alzheimer's disease pa diseased patients. So I hope I'm saying that right. Drebin, D-R-E-B-I-N. Maybe it's Drebin. I don't know. Maybe it depends on who, which researcher it is. Um, so, and it's, that's been associated with also increased synaptic plasticity. So both of those, um, great benefit. Also, um, it enhanced the performance of these mice in, uh, memory tests, particularly in the intermittently fasted group. We also know that intermittent fasting does in, tend to increase the expression of BDNF. So... All of these things together um, suggest that intermittent fasting is, in fact, good for your mental health. Again, this is a, a study in mice, so it's a little bit of a jump, but I don't think it's that far of a jump to make. Um, thanks for tuning in. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, please uh, give me a thumbs up or click uh, bookmark on this channel, which would be subscribing to the channel so that you receive future updates. Adios.